Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a box, BBC Legends, Volume 4. I have Volume 3 right over here, too, and I don't think I did that, so I have to do that one, too. I think I did one and two for ClassicsToday.com. Um, but if I didn't, well, I'll dig those out at some point in one of these years and probably do them as well. But here we have, here we have uh, Volume 4. I think it's the last one in the series, frankly. Each of these contains 20 CDs. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, well, let's see if they are indeed legends. Some of these are marvelous. Some are. They started out really badly, this series, quite frankly. They used, like, the biggest names, but in horrible sound. But as they went on, they seemed to do a little better. So, let's see. CDs 1 and 2, Klaus Tenstedt, Mahler 7, and Mozart's Jupiter Symphony. Okay, the Mozart is nothing special. Let's be straight ahead. You know, I'll take these out so that we can... They have no notes or anything, um, unlike the actual CD issues. Uh, but uh, I can tell you what orchestras they are. and what, This is London Philharmonic. Yeah, London Philharmonic. The Mahler 7 is a decent Mahler 7. It's like Tenshnet's other Mahler 7s. It's not a work that he was able to put over with, you know, the extraordinary passion and intensity that he did, for example, numbers 5 and 6. Um, and, you know, there are studio recordings around of this stuff, and uh, it, it's okay. It's just okay. Um, let's see, where are we now? It was volume one and two, right? Yeah, volume, yeah, CDs one and two. Ah, CD three. This is great. Ah, ah. Silvestri, Tchaikovsky's Manfred Symphony. is one of the few conductors who could pull that off. His mono recording done on with the uh, Paris Conservatory Orchestra is fabulous. And this is also fabulous. It's live with the Bournemouth Symphony. The playing has a couple you know, unsteady moments, but it's okay. And the Pines of Rome. This is a wonderful collection from a conductor who unfortunately made far too few recordings. Far too few. Then we've got Richter doing Schubert sonatas uh, in B major, F minor, A major, Deutsch 575, 625, 664, and the Moment Musical number one, um, Deutsch 780. Um, they're very good. If you have Richter, Schubert, there are other performances available. These are not so different that it really matters that you want to collect them and, you know, say, oh, well, I, well, if you're a Richter collector, you're going to collect it anyway. Um, other people who have Richter playing these works and other Schubert works, you don't need to worry about it. Um, but it's good. I mean, it's nothing, nothing wrong with it. It's Richter. He has moments of greatness in everything he does. Oh, Mahler IV and Le Corsair Overture with Heather Harper, the BBC Symphony, and Barberale sucks. Just nothing special. First of all, the finale goes at a crawl. 11 minutes for the finale. It's a snoozeroo. And the rest of it is just not well played by the BBC Symphony. They are struggling, and Barbaroli is struggling, and the Corsair Overture is uninteresting. Heather Harper is the only redeeming thing here. Um, she also did a similarly dull recording with Lauren Mazel, his first one that appeared originally on Nonsuch. Remember that? With the Berlin Radio or whatever it was? She, she deserved better in all cases. This is just no. It's a, it's a no. Leave it at that. Beethoven, let's see, the Emperor Concerto and the Coronation Concerto with Clifford Curzon, the BBC Symphony and Pierre Boulez. Well, for Curzon fans, again, you know, people want these things. Uh, Boulez brings nothing particularly interesting to the table. Curzon is always beautiful with Beethoven and Mozart, and so he is here. So there you go. Uh, then we've got, let's see here, oh, Lily Boulanger. Doing doing uh, Psalm twenty four, the P A Yezu, um, and the Psalm one thirty, and then the Foray Requiem with Nadia Boulanger, um, and you know uh, she was a wonderful conductor in this music. Um, it's a lovely performance, and uh, yeah, it's a good, one of the good ones. Absolutely, uh, Bruckner five with Yasha Horenstein in the BBC Symphony. Mm. It's really good. It's a very, very solid performance. You know, Bruckner works with Horenstein's predilections. Horenstein had a conduct, he was a conductor who in his later phase, which is when all this was, became very stiff in tempo. He would like start a tempo, everything would go at the same speed. Bruckner works that way. Bruckner works that way because his music comes in chunks separated by pauses and, and you can just like get it going and it, it, it works. You don't have to, you don't have to mess with it. 
but he shapes these pieces very well. He has the structure of the finale nicely planned, and the BBC um, Symphony Orchestra plays quite well for him. The sound isn't great. It's okay. Um, let me see. It's, it is stereo, but um, the performance takes 74 minutes, which is a reasonable amount of time, and uh, it's, it's, it's very solid and not a disgrace, which you, know, you will not hear me say very often when it comes to Yasha Horenstein. Then we've got Mahler songs, the Rickert leader songs of a Wayfarer, and the early songs with Fisher D. Scow and Carl Engel. An excellent recital. Fisher D. Scow is in very good form. His delivery was always kind of declamatory. You know, he tends to bark. But at this point, what year was this? It's in stereo from 1970. Um, he, he hadn't dried out to the point, <clears throat> like my voice just did, where he's always going, woof, 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 woof. Das Morgen Fisch and Dry. Oh, that's, that's the wrong song. That's Revelga. But, you know, in these other things, he, he sings. He sings and he sings very, very nicely and very expressively. And and uh, Carl Engel's fine as a pianist. Then we've got the Greek Piano Concerto and Debussy Preludes Book One with Michelangelo. Well, the Greek is famous. It's one of the great Greeks. It is one of the most hard-edged, um, rhythmically taught performances you will ever hear in your life. Um, it's in mono, and it's but it's good, solid mono. It's it's an amazing performance. It's with Raphael Frubeck de Borgos in the New Philharmonia. The Debussy Preludes, of course, he recorded um, for Deutsche Grammophon in the studio, and that's the one to get, although these are very, very fine. I mean, there's very little difference, actually, other than sonics. Um, so, you know, Michelangelo is always an event. He really is, whether you like it or not. Then we've got an Adrian Bolt thing with the Philharmonia and the Royal Phil, doing Schubert's Unfinished, the Petite Suite by Bizet, Ravel's Daphnis and Chloe Suite No. 2, and the Sibelius 7. These are first class. Absolutely first class. You know, Adrian Bolt could do a lot besides the, the English repertoire. He wasn't asked to. I mean, for example, his Brahms serenades were just splendid. And, you know, he was he was part of that generation of the, you know, Klemperer and, and Jochums and Zells and Reiners and all those people. And, and he knew German romantic music, he knew romantic music. He tended to be a little bit sloppy, um, you know, in terms of orchestral discipline. But these are fine performances, very well recorded, too. Even the Ravel, surprisingly exciting. I wouldn't say it's sexy, but it's exciting. And the Sibelius 7 is, is, is really first class and wonderfully knit together. It takes 19 minutes and 55 seconds. Exactly seems to me the right time. It would be very interesting to have known what he could have done with the Sibelius symphonies, with all of them. I mean, he did some tone poems that were nothing special, but this is really good. It's a, I, I was happy to hear that. Then we've got the Britain War Requiem. It's on two discs, I think it is. No, it's only on one. With Carlo Maria Giolini and Benjamin Britten is conducting the chamber orchestra. And the problem with this recording, as I said when I reviewed this originally on ClassicsToday.com, in fact, most of these were originally reviewed on ClassicsToday.com, so you can usually check out longer reviews for these individual titles. Um, the problem with this War Requiem is that Britain is around. This was from 69. The sound is... is Nothing as good as Britain's own recording. And the interpretation is just about the same, probably because Britain was around. So there wasn't anything that Giolini brought to the picture. The soloists are Stefania Wojtowicz, Peter Piers, and Hans Vilbrink. I mean, you know, they managed to find like an Eastern European and an English and a German person to do it. But truth is, it's, it's just not as good as Britain's own. And from that period and, and in crappy sound, who cares? Um, then we've got Liszt, oh, this John Ogden Liszt recital. You've got the first piano concerto with Silvestri in Bournemouth, which is really smoking. And the second concerto with Colin Davis, which has its moments, but some few, a well, few wayward things. And some solos, the Mephisto Waltz number one, which didn't impress me a bit. The Grand Fantasy de Bravour, Sur la Clochette, um, which is basically the same thing as La Campanella. From Paganini, you know, the Paganini etude only it's lot much, much, much longer. And the transcendental etude, Harmony du Soir. Um, none of the solo works are really all that special. Um, and really, this is you get for the first concerto with Silvestri. Everything else you can get much better elsewhere. Rimsky Korsakov, the procession of the nobles, Scheherazade, and Scriabin's poem of ecstasy with Svetlanov. Fabulous. The best Scheherazade he ever did, right here, 
You heard it here, folks. A very good sound. It's it's voluptuous. It's exciting. It's wonderfully snappy. It's more exciting than his studio recording for EMI, which he made around the same time in London. That was very languorous. You know, this has it's very languorous too, but it's still, but it has more energy. And the poem of ecstasy is exciting, really exciting. It was recorded in like Albert Hall, but somehow they make it work. Most of it, the sound isn't as good as the Scheherazade, but this is a wonderful, wonderful tribute to, to Svetlanov. It really is. Um, it shows him at his best. Then we've got Beethoven Symphonies 8 and... The ninth. Yeah, with George Sell and the New Philharmonia with Heather Harper, Janet Baker, Ronald Dowd, and Franz Kras soloists. I mean, these are mono, and they're from 1968. Um, and, I mean, it's, it's Sell... His Cleveland recordings sound better. They are better played, but it's the interpretations are almost exactly the same. Um, I, you know, Sell is one of those con conductors who I collect in different repertoire, but unless he's got like the Vienna Philharmonic or some orchestra with a really distinctive different profile, um, I, I'm not really too interested in hearing him do the same thing over and over again because his interpretations are so consistent extremely consistent and these are there's nothing nothing bad about them. And they've got the discipline they've got the you know the pizzazz they've got all the things that make so wonderful but okay then we've got oh wow yeah this is a dennis brain thing dennis brain yes it's mozart britain schumann mio and fricker chamber and orchestral works for horn with dennis brain well I mean, it's Dennis Brain, right? You got the Mozart Third Horde Concerto, Britain Serenade for Tenor Horn and Strings with Peter Pears, Schumann's Adagio and Allegro for Piano and Horn, Mozart's Divertimento for Two Horns and Two Bassoons and Two Oboes, Mio's, um, oh yes, Le, Le Cheminée du La René for Flute, Oboe, Clarinet, Horn, and Bassoon, and Peter Racine Fricker's Quintet. For woodwind. It's a wind quintet. Yes, that's enough said. It's a wind quintet. And it's Dennis Brain. If you're a Dennis Brain collector, you'll want it. That's all. I mean, it's from the 50s. It's, it's, it's an icky sound part of it. Let me see if I remember this correctly. Yeah, it's so-so. But it's Dennis Brain. Then we've got this nifty Rudolf Kempa thing. The Tippett Concerto for Double String Orchestra. The Berg Violin Concerto with Edith Peinemann. And Janicek Sinfonietta. Now, I mean, it's the BBC Symphony, it's Kempa. There's some, you know, baubles here and there, but it's Kempa. It, it's BBC, it's in stereo, and it's 78 minutes on a single disc. It's a wonderful recital. It really is. I, I like the Janicek. He, his Janicek was always a little bit on the slow and deliberate side. I like to hear a little more spunk, but it's nothing not to like. I mean, you know, that's just such a, such a wonderful program, isn't it? And then we've got, what's this? Oh, the Elgar Cello Concerto, the Brahms Double Concerto, and DBC's Cello Sonata with Paul Tortelier, Jan Pascal Tortelier Violin, Ernest Lush Piano, the BBC Symphony with Adrian Bolt and John Pritchard. I just don't care about this. I mean, I, I, this is me. You know, I heard it and, and I remember, well, the Elgar, as you all know, I don't particularly care for. It doesn't do anything for me. And, and the Brahms double concerto here, it's good, but it's, it, it, you know, I mean, it, there's just, I mean, even Tortelier did this stuff, you know, I don't find any, any particular benefit in hearing these things live. Um, and then Beethoven with Rudolf Serkin, his Hammer Clavier, which he always did wonderfully, and Piano Sonata number 31. Now, one of them is mono and one of them is stereo. Let me see how these are. One is from 19... 68 and the other is from 71 the hammer club here no opus 131 um, opus 110 number 31 opus 110 is stereo hammer club here is mono i mean circuit was a beethoven master um and and if you collect circuit then you'll want to hear these things again um if you don't then you won't how's that for a simple simple explanation um, but there's nothing wrong with the performances. I mean, I love hearing Circuit and Beethoven, no matter when, when or how. And we've been talking about him a lot recently. So there you go. There you go, my friends. 20 CDs of BBC Legends with some really first-rate things in here. So if you missed the originals and you want to get a cheapy, cheapy box and the repertoire appeals to you, by all means, go ahead. And keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.